lie on your back, on the ground like a corpse, wrote the yogi Swatmarama in the Hatha Pradipika, Light on Hatha Yoga, slightly more than 500 years ago. This is Shavasana, the corpse pose. It does away with fatigue and brings rest to your conscious mind. To us, accustomed as we are to our teacher's detailed instructions, Swatmarama barely skims the surface. But we should remember these old texts were more like summaries or outlines of the teaching. The specifics on how to put that teaching into play were passed by word of mouth from the guru to the student. Nonetheless, in Swatmarama's two brief sentences, we see the rudiments, the how and why, of our modern restorative practice. We're to lie supine on the ground, the most stable and secure of all positions, and maintain a corpse-like stillness, which has a corresponding effect on the brain, that promises to reinvigorate the body and calm the mind. Over the 400 years following the Hatha Pradipika, in the dozen or so texts I searched, the written instruction for the pose stays pretty much the same. Lie down on the floor like a corpse, reads the mid-19th century Sri Tattva Nidhi, blessed treasure of reality. This is Shavasana. Also, during the same time, corpse is apparently used mostly, if not exclusively, to put the finishing touch on an asana practice. This all begins to change in the early decades of the 20th century, where several factors contribute to the emergence of restorative yoga. There's the reinvention and popularization of Hatha yoga by certain Indian teachers and the gradual westward migration of this revitalized practice, especially after the 1960s. With the slow but steady increase of newly minted yogis, and the consequent impracticality of face-to-face -face meetings with a guru for teaching, there appear for the first time full-blown instruction manuals, written not for the ascetic, as were the old texts, but for the general public for whom yoga was a part, either great or small, but not the be-all and end-all of their lives. These books then needed to be far more expansive than the old texts. We see, for example, in Yogacharya Sundaram's The Secret of Happiness, or Yogic Physical Culture, that corpse is covered in a six-page essay that offers directions not only on how to enter the pose, but what to do while in it and how to properly exit. One should not get up suddenly or jerk into position immediately after Shavasana. Sound familiar? There's also a recognition that corpse needn't be limited to the finish of an asana practice, that its soothing effects could be beneficial in many different everyday situations. So Sri Yogendra, founder of the Yoga Institute of India, writes in his Yoga Asana Simplified, Whenever physical or mental fatigue is experienced, or the mind is agitated, the practice of Shavasana is recommended. Note the opening word, whenever. Finally, it was during this time that science-minded researchers like Swami Kuvalayananda, founder of the Kevalya Dhamma Health and Yoga Research Center, used instruments like x-rays and spirometers to measure the effects of the various practices on test subjects. So we find, for example, in the July 1926 issue, of Kuvalayananda's quarterly house organ, Yoga Mimamsa, a four-page report on corpse, in which is broken down into three stages, with suggested cautions and points of study listed, a far cry from Swatmarama. All this sets the stage for the book you are listening to. I had the opportunity to witness from afar 5,300 miles or so, she in the UK, me in California, Anna's year-long writing journey from the conception of this book to its completion. Like